Have you ever been in the ocean and had a strong feeling that something is swimming deep underneath you? Well, 145 million years ago in the early Cretaceous, something most likely was. And it wasn't a small something either. The aptly named Abyssosaurus could have been watching you from deep below. Now, this would only have been the case if you had been taking a dip in the Arctic Circle. I don't know about you, but I prefer swimming somewhere not frozen. However, we know this from the discovery site of today's animal. So let's dive into its discovery and what makes the Abyssosaurus such a creepy deep-sea dinosaur. Let the thalassophobia begin. A relatively recent discovery in 2011 led to a rare glimpse at this prehistoric predator. Bone fragments were found in the Chuvasha Republic in Russia. Neck, shoulder, rib and rear flippers were unearthed. And they seemed to point to a fairly large marine reptile. More specifically, and after some reclassifications, they pointed to an elasmosaurid dinosaur belonging to the Cryptoclidus family, a group of plesiosaurs with elongated necks. A few years later, in 2018, a skull was discovered, providing a more complete image of this abyssal predator. This find was particularly exciting, as it offered new insights into how these marine reptiles might have thrived in different ecological niches, in this case, the deep sea. Altogether, the fossil measured roughly 7 metres or 23 feet, approximately half of which was the neck, with a 30 centimetre or 1 foot skull on the end. But it wasn't just the size of this marine reptile that was gathered from these fossils. Abyssosaurus, or the abyssal lizard, is so called due to the estimations made about its morphology, which pointed to a life in the deep sea. It had plenty of relatives in the cryptoclidid group, such as Spitrosaurus and Colymbosaurus, occupying various niches in shallower waters. However, Abyssosaurus was well adapted to avoid competition with such species or most species for that matter, mastering the deep sea to gain access to less competed resources. Drawing inferences from modern species with similar builds, like the sperm whale, we can guess that Abyssosaurus was likely a solitary hunter, focusing on stealth and ambush tactics as it hunted crustaceans, or fast-moving squid and deep sea fish species. It may have gathered in groups during specific times of the year for mating or migrating to richer feeding grounds, but likely spent time alone hunting in the depths of the Bathial Plains, surfacing occasionally to take gulps of air before returning to the darkness below. Despite its size and sneaky capabilities of sinking to the hidden deep, resurfacing was likely its most vulnerable time. Exhausted of energy and breath, it had to cross the path of pelagic and surface-dwelling species like ichthyosaurs, mosasaurs or other plesiosaurs like Kronosaurus the larger of which could have easily been attracted to the idea of chomping on a tired Abyssosaurus. But in the deep, it was a different beast. How did paleontologists identify that this seven-metre predator was so well suited to lurking underneath all other life forms? Let's start with the head. The skull had very large orbital cavities or eye holes, suggesting that this predator had unusually large eyeballs with which to fill them. In fact, in the cryptoclidid family, Abyssosaurus had the largest eyes relative to its body size, something which would have come in handy in the low light levels of the deep sea. To add, the skull also had a narrow snout, bulging at the back thanks to an enlarged occipital bone. Comparing this to whale skulls, we see similar morphologies in diving whales like sperm whales. The bulge is to accommodate a store of fatty tissue filled with blood vessels. This large web of blood vessels is called the reta mirabile and is used to diffuse nitrogen from the blood while diving, as well as reduce pressure around the brain at increased depths. All signs that point to an evolution of deep sea diving while avoiding decompression sickness as seen in modern diving species. This web also helped to control the circulation of fluid to the skull, so that the brain would not receive a sudden shock of cold blood as the abyssosaurus made a headfirst dive into the icy depths. At the snout, the narrowing would have been useful for picking at crustaceans and cephalopods on the ocean floor. Prey, which would have been abundant in the northern ecosystem that the Abyssosaurus was found. Comparing to similar plesiosaurs, Abyssosaurus most likely had a strong bite capable of crushing crustacean shells. Combining this with conical recurved teeth, 
we can estimate it as a generalist hunter, with the option to also lunge at slippery prey before entrapping them in its jaws and slowly swallowing them down its long neck. In the deep sea, you can't afford to be picky about food choices, so these adaptations are hardly surprising. Best keep your toes out of the deeper water next time you're in the ocean. The narrowing skull shape we've mentioned is also similar to those of immature individuals of other elasmosaurid species. In what is quite an interesting piece of evolution, it has been observed that deep sea species maintain the same features as immature individuals, known as pedomorphia, as well as similar behaviours in a more slow, sedentary lifestyle. This is perhaps to conserve energy in high-pressure environments where food can be scarce, coupled with a slower maturation rate. Such adaptations are seen in sperm whales, allowing it to take a series of long dives followed by rest period, sleeping vertically near the surface. Abyssosaurus may be similar, as it is theorised to hunt in the bathyal zone, 1,000 to 4,000 metres below the surface. This evidence is further supported when moving down the body and looking at the neck. The vertebrae in its neck were very tightly packed, giving little lateral movement the opposite to what is observed in pelagic predators that need to make quick grabs at prey no matter what angle. Instead, Abyssosaurus had better ventral movement, capable of bending its neck downwards to a significant extent, further supporting the idea that it sifted through sediment for benthic prey. It also had a relatively short neck compared to other cryptoclidids. Moving down to the shoulders, we see that the muscles connect to the flippers at a very harsh angle. This means that its flippers were not particularly good at moving up and down in a vertical motion, as seen in pelagic species that cruise horizontally, using this motion to maintain the same depth. Instead, Abyssosaurus's flippers were better suited to a rowing motion, which comes in handy once it dips its head down in a dive. This rowing motion now pushes water backwards, forcing itself down as it fights its buoyancy to dive into the murky depths to hunt and conversely aiding its fight against water pressure when it wants to resurface. Speaking of buoyancy, it even had adaptations to help with this. Abyssosaurus's bones were dense and compact, known as pachyostosis, containing more cartilage than usual. This had two functions. The first is acting as a ballast, helping the Abyssosaurus to sink rather than fight against its own buoyancy. The second is joint function at various depths. Cartilage does not expand or contract easily under different water pressures, unlike fluid-based joints, so it allows for more efficient movement, as well as neutral buoyancy in the high-pressure environments of the deep. These factors, coupled with large rear flippers that used the rowing motion previously mentioned, would have helped Abyssosaurus to hover in a diagonal position at the seafloor while it picked at the sediment for prey. In the torso, Abyssosaurus's ribcage was modified to allow its lungs to expand further, increasing dive time and reducing the energy needed to resurface more frequently. Moving to the pelvis, it had very dense gastralia bones, which are found between the sternum and pelvis. These would have acted as ballasts, even more so than the already dense body adaptations it had. This would have helped to counteract the buoyancy of its large lung capacity. Combining all of these features, we paint the picture of a large, well-adapted marine predator capable of sinking itself into the icy dark abyss of the Arctic Ocean during the late Jurassic and early Cretaceous. We hope this doesn't put you off swimming in the ocean. The Abyssosaurus is extinct after all. At least, we think it is. See you next time.